Kepler primary kidney transplantation into the right iliac fossa is shown. Some technical details are provided that may require basic surgical and anatomical knowledge. The procedure starts with opening the skin in the lower abdomen with a surgical knife. The hockey stick or oblique incisions are most common. The length of incision depends on the habitus of the patient and ends 2 cm above the pubic bone, which allows access to the retroperitoneal space, the iliac vessels and the bladder. The subcutaneous fat is incised using electrocautery. The fascia of the external oblique muscle is incised diagonally. The combined fascia of the internal oblique and transverse muscles is incised in a more vertical fashion. The preperitoneal space is exposed and the inferior epigastric vessels as well as the rotund ligament in females or spermatic cord in males are identified and secured with a vessel loop. The lowest part of the posterior rectus sheath is incised. After this, the retroperitoneal space is reached by gently pushing away the peritoneum. Its contents are held by a retractor. The common external and internal iliac artery and vein are identified and dissected from fatty tissue and lymphatic tissue to make clamping of the vessels possible. The iliac arteries are investigated by palpation for atherosclerosis. The kidney is now retrieved from cold storage. In this animation, it has already been prepared for transplantation and pre-transplant biopsy has been taken. Corner stitches are applied to the renal vein edges. The kidney is placed into the iliac fossa in the best possible position and the length of the renal vein and artery may need adjustment. First, the vein to vein anastomosis is done. If needed, the iliac artery is retracted very gently to improve access. The iliac vein is clamped and cut. and the incision is extended. A supporting pull-out stitch is placed on the medial side to keep the lumen open. A heparin solution is used to rinse and clean the lumen from blood and small thrombotic material. The renal vein corner stitches are connected to the corners of the opening of the iliac vein and from one corner the venous anastomosis is performed, in general by using a 5O unabsorbable monofilament running suture. The supporting stitch is removed and both remaining sutures are knotted. Next, the iliac arteries are clamped. The artery, preferably the common iliac, is incised and the opening is enlarged using a 4 mm aortic punch. The artery is cleaned with heparin solution. The arterial anastomosis is now performed using a parachuted 6O unabsorbable running suture. Before reperfusion of the kidney, the renal artery is clamped close to the anastomosis. This is done to prevent blood clots to go into the kidney. First the arterial clamps are removed and the anastomosis is checked. If there is no major bleeding, the other vascular clamps are taken off and the kidney is reperfused with blood. Over time the kidney color should change to a more pink aspect. The kidney is warmed up using warm saline solution and the kidney and the vessels are checked for bleeding. When the perfusion of the kidney seems to be appropriate, the anastomosis between ureter and bladder is performed. Through the urinary catheter the bladder is filled with saline. The ureter is cut to the right length and the lumen is spatulated by a longitudinal incision. It is dragged under the epigastric vessels and spermatic cord to the bladder. Production of urine may be observed at this stage. The bladder is now opened, first the muscular layer and second the ceramucosal layer. Corner stitches are placed between the urinary bladder and the ureter. The ureter extent is inserted. The ureter bladder anastomosis is now performed using semi-absorbable 5O running suture. The anastomosis is retracted into the bladder and the muscular layer is closed over the ureter anastomosis to create a valve effect that minimizes urinary reflux. When hemostasis and kidney perfusion are adequate, the peritoneum and its contents are placed over the kidney. The posterior rectus sheath is closed first. Then the internal transverse fascia is closed, 
and the external fascia is closed, all of them using semi-absorbable suture. The subcutaneous layer and the skin are closed using absorbable sutures.